The pretrial hearing for a private first class Bradley Manning continued over the weekend as his supporters rallied outside the gates of Fort Meade, Maryland. Officials have restricted media and public access to the trial in which government prosecutors seek a life sentence for Manning for passing over 250,000 classified documents to WikiLeaks. FSRN's Alice Olstein has the story. Participants from Occupy Wall Street, Occupy D.C., and Occupy Newark marched alongside veterans and activists from across the U.S. at Saturday's rally, calling for Bradley Manning's release. Let Bradley go! Hey, hey. 21-year-old Michael Patterson is with Iraq Veterans Against the War and participates in Occupy D.C. Though he pledges to keep supporting Manning as his case moves along, he has little faith in the proceedings. It's pretty much a show trial. Like, I mean, when the president, when the president of the United States says that you're already guilty, tell me which officer is going to, going to say to the commander in chief, the head of the entire military, no, Mr. President, you're incorrect. That's so much added pressure. That's literally like you know the emperor telling you, don't do this. At a campaign fundraiser in April, President Obama was caught on camera telling a reporter that Manning, quote, broke the law months before the trial to determine that began. Manning's defense team requested that President Obama, along with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and other officials, testify at the hearing. But investigating officer Paul Almanza denied nearly all of the defense team's requested witnesses, a decision Manning's lawyer has vowed to appeal. While some are skeptical of the military judicial system, others say it could shed light on underlying issues in military intelligence. Anne Wilcox is an attorney and legal observer with the National Lawyers Guild. Hopefully they'll make an effort to not just go with the, you know, the publicity that he's you know, a traitor and helping the enemy and, and give it a fair look and also look carefully at the um, overclassification issues because I think that's really what the case is going to turn on is whether this was really secret at all. On Friday, Manning's lawyer began the hearing by demanding that investigating officer Almanza recuse himself from the case. The defense team argued that serving as a prosecutor for the Justice Department, the agency currently pursuing a case against WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, made Almanza biased. When he refused to step down from judging the case, Manning's lawyer promised to appeal. The hearing has also put a spotlight on Manning's sexual orientation. Defense lawyers told the military court that Manning was emotionally unstable, suffering from gender identity disorder, and should not have been allowed to handle sensitive information in the first place. Captain Stephen Lim, one of Manning's superiors in Baghdad, testified that Manning should have had his security clearance revoked after a series of pre-deployment outbursts, in which Manning threw a chair and assaulted a supervisor. And on Monday, the defense team questioned Manning's former Baghdad roommate, who said he stopped speaking to Manning after discovering he was gay. Several gay veterans were among those at Saturday's rally, including Lieutenant Dan Choi. Following his discharge from the Army for his sexual orientation, Choi became one of the most public figures in the successful push to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Choi says Manning's treatment at the hands of the military has been far more criminal than his actions. When you strip away habeas corpus and when you judge somebody before trial, when you confine them for a year and a half, when you strip them naked, when you torture them and try to get forced confessions, that is an assault on the Constitution. Manning was held at the Quantico, Virginia brig for 10 months, much of that time in near total isolation. After thousands of supporters petitioned and protested, he was moved to Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, where his lawyers say his conditions greatly improved. United Nations torture expert Juan Mendez recently called for a worldwide ban of solitary confinement longer than 15 days, saying the practice causes lasting mental damage and amounts to torture. Veteran Michael Patterson, who also worked in military intelligence, says the pretrial conditions and many charges against Manning are meant to scare other potential whistleblowers. It also shows other people within the intelligence community in the military, like, you know, if you give information, we're going to charge you with some capital offenses that he can put you to death, which, you know, they say they don't want to put uh, Bradley Manning to death, but a military judge has, reserves the right to declare whatever sentence he wants to. So, yeah, it, it acts as a, it's a punishment for him, and it, it's, it's a, it, it's, yeah, he's, he's being made an example out of. Occupy Wall Street sponsored a bus from New York City to Fort Meade, bringing about 50 participants to the rally. As Army helicopters flew overhead, Vietnam veteran John Penley used the well-known People's Mic to share a message from the General Assembly. Bradley Manning is... Bradley Manning is... Part of the 99%. Part of the 99%. We will not stop... We will not stop... 
until Bradley Manning, until Bradley Manning is, on the is on the street camping with us, camping with us at an Occupy in this country. Saturday's rally was also in honor of Manning's 24th birthday. Solidarity actions were held around the world, from Sydney, Australia to Toronto. Manning's hearing continues through Wednesday or Thursday of this week, and a ruling on the case will likely come in spring of 2012. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.